Good evening, this is Natalie Zangon. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, they had asked me a few times to do a video regarding pregnancy and fertility and what steps can be taken and what we can do and a lot of interesting information regarding this department. So I work as an advocate regarding fertility and um, pregnancy. My husband and I also went through a journey of our own until we were blessed with our children. So I believe that it's so important to be educated, to know, to learn and understand and find out what steps you can take to better help your journey if you're trying to get pregnant. So many people are under the misconception that any couple that gets married and wants to have kids, then it happens, it just works out. In many cases, it can happen that way, but for some other couples, it doesn't necessarily work that way and their journey is a bit different. So um, it's important to know that according to the Torah law, we do have options and opportunities and ways to intervene when things are not working out on its own just through regular intimacy and to find out what the cause of it is. So number one factor is if you are in a relationship and there are tension and frustration and things that are going on, having children is not going to solve your problem. It's going to just add to your problem. There's a misconception that people think when couples can't get along, all they should do is have kids and things are going to fall apart. Well, your body knows best. When your body is in a tense situation where there is constant argument, disagreements, fights, the last thing the woman's uterus wants to do is to allow an embryo to be implanted into the uterus wall because her body produces so much cortisol and adrenaline that it will make it very hard for conception to happen with some cases. And then for the man, the same thing, that when he's in a tense, frustrating mode, the chances of him releasing sperms that are um, fit and capable to conceive and to lead to pregnancy will also be less. So the number of one reason and factor is that you need to be in a mind, calm, serene, peaceful state for pregnancy to take place. Again, with some people, it can just happen. But others, that is a factor. When the body is under so much cortisol and adrenaline and their stress hormones are pumping, the last thing the body wants to do is to procreate, to have more children. So number one factor is do a check-in, do a uh, you know, thorough check-in and see where you and your spouse are holding. Where is your relationship holding? Where is your emotional state is holding? Are you in a good space? Are you in a tense space? Are you in a disconnect space? Where are you holding? And pay attention to that. As you can see, I have a calendar behind me. So the, num the second part is within a 30-day with a month cycle, a woman has 24 hours within that month that she's at the highest chance of her ov um, ovulation and where conception can happen. So every month the woman's ovary releases, she has two ovaries and then there's the uterus. So every month she releases one egg from one of the ovaries. One month is this one, one month is this one. And sometimes she can release two eggs which leads to twins. So when the egg gets released, it's within the fallopian tube coming into the uterus. It has 24 hours to meet with the sperm for the uh, conception to happen. And then the next stage is the implantation inside the uterus wall. So there's 24 hour time window, which is the prime time. So it's really a good idea for a woman to find out when is the date that she's ovulating. And with the laws of family purity, the NIDA laws, is to find out is she ovulating before the mikveh, after the mikveh, and it's extremely important to have a rabbi and to have a medical doctor that's sensitive and understanding of your practices of your religious Jewish laws regarding family purity to better guide you through this. So when the egg gets released, like I said, it has 24 hours. So now 
It all depends on the quality of the egg as well and what is happening within the uterus. So the uterus is prepared every month to be able to hold space if it leads into conception and implantation, right? But what happens if there are things around the uterus wall that's interfering with a plantation? So it could be polyps, fibroids, and other factors that can take place and interfere with the implantation, which is a specialist, a gynecologist who specializes in this area, can figure this out and do a CT scan and um, whatever things that they do to find out what is happening that's interfering with the implantation, right? We also have another factor of what is happening with the male's department. So there are religious Jewish ways of getting all those testing done too. Many assume when a man's body works the way it does and has a, a natural release process, then everything is fine with them. Not necessarily. So it could be that the releasing is happening, but you got to find out what kind of quality of sperm is being released. Again, with halachic rabbanim and doctors, that too can also be checked to find out what's happening. In some cases, it could be that both are well, but the conception is not happening, which means the couple needs even extra and further help and assistance for the conception to take place. Sometimes it's about artificially taking the sperm, doing the sperm wash, and taking the ones that are the strongest and inseminating it in an artificial format, which again, with a rabbi and a medical professional permission, this can also be done. And then if that doesn't work, then it's other interventions that takes place that again, it needs to be consulted with a rabbi and the doctor to do it the proper way. So part of the fact of knowing more about your body, about your system, about when you're ovulating can be a great help. Age is a huge factor, especially when it comes to women. Women age interferes with the kind of eggs she's producing with the quality and also the quality of her being able to carry the pregnancy through when a woman is before the age of 35 her body works very differently once she's 35 and above her body works even more different than that so the age makes a great factor. The kind of quality of egg that a woman produces under the age of 35, they're a lot more predominantly stronger, more capable, um, kind of like on a very, very different way. And when she's 35 and above, the qualities do change in different formats. So if a couple gets married and they're in their mid 30s, there's one factor of the age, and but a couple that gets married in their early 20s, it's a different story. But it's very important to be in touch with a rabbi who specializes in this, and also to be in touch with a rabbi and a doctor that can work with you according to the Jewish laws and practices to take care of this the right way. Having a family, having children, it's one of the greatest blessings ever. And the journey to getting into pregnancy is not the same for everyone. Every person, every couple has their only own journey of getting to it. What's so amazing is that we are blessed through the Jewish philosophy and Torah and mitzvot that we could benefit from these interventions. And it's so important to get the help, to get the intervention, the sooner the better, because Time and age is literally like a gold mine. Like the, the younger you are, the better, like I said, the eggs you produce is so much better. The quality is better and it could be a huge help for yourself. Sometimes it could be that the egg is good, the sperm is good, but the woman's body, her uterus, her heart, other things in her body might not have the capability to carry the pregnancy 
And that's a whole other department of what do you do then? So there's so many different factors and ways of dealing with it. But just to recap what we spoke about, if you're married and you're trying to get pregnant and it's not happening, make sure to get involved a rabbi that specializes in this area and work with a doctor that specializes in this area. Number one, check your stress level. How are you and your husband doing? with your stress and frustration and tension of your life. Number two, as a woman, find out when are you ovulating. Get an ovulation kit. They sell it over the counter. Amazon sells it. You could just order it online. It's very simple. It has a urine a stick that the female urinates on every morning at a certain time. And, and it will let them know when she's ovulating. That within the time that she's, she ovulates, she has 24 hours that she's at the highest rate of being able to get pregnant. So it's so important to find out about that. Number two, you need to make sure that the uterus is doing fine. Because anytime you want to plant, even with an apple tree, you got to make sure that the ground and the place that you're planting it is going to get enough water, enough sunlight, enough of everything that it needs to give you an apple tree. That's the same thing when it comes to conception and pregnancy. You gotta make make sure that the uterus wall is doing fine. Number three, you gotta make sure where the husband is holding, which again, with the rabbi and halachic intervention, you could get the right process of how to do that and how to go about it to make sure to get him tested what you eat, the amount of stress, the exposure to alcohol and smoking, all of these things affect procreation. Because when your body is getting influenced by these things, the last thing it wants to do is to procreate and have children. So you got to be mindful of that. Our mind affects our body. The calmer you are, the more relaxed you are, the more peaceful you are, the more higher chance of procreation you're going to have. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. This is Natalie Zangon. Um, my hope for this video is to create awareness and education. You need to be an advocate for yourself. You and your spouse need to do the advocacy for yourself to find out what's going on, what steps can you get, how can you help the journey. Don't be passive. Be assertive. Follow up ask questions, read, because it's not the same for everyone. Bracha and Hatzlacha and prayer for everyone that's waiting to conceive, to be blessed with children, healthy children, with Bracha and Hatzlacha. Thank you so much for listening. And I wanted to do this um, video in honor and memory of my beloved grandmother, Esther Bat Yehoshua that she used to always say, Yek dunat por dunabeshe. you should go on, you know, one, one of your um, children should multiply to many more. Anytime people would go on trips, she would say, go to and come back three, always had brachot, brachot for pregnancy and conception. So whoever's listening to this, Hashem should give you bracha and hatzacha and help you to conceive at the right way, in a healthy way. If you have a Kala teacher, if you have a rabbi, be in touch with them, follow up, ask questions, do not be passive. Time is valuable. Your age is valuable. Don't just wait. Thank you for watching.